Hi everyone, I am Chen from the Shandong University. This talk is about message authentication or message authentication codes. Uh, the work is cooperated with Fix, Weijia, and Yuyu. The talk will follow this online. We will first recall something about uh, message authentication. Uh, message authentication is a symmetric key crypto system. It has a tag function taking a message as the input and produce a corresponding tag T and has a verification algorithm. The algorithm will take the message and uh, use a specified tag T as input and output either accept or reject. Accept means the message is intact and reject means uh, otherwise the message has been tampered during transmitting. So we follow the definition of this reference. Uh, we will call them, we will distinguish between message authentication scheme and the message authentication codes. By message authentication codes, it means the verification algorithm is defined by uh, executing the tagging function tag and check if the output of the tagging function equals the user specified input tag T. Uh, if they are equal, they, it, it outputs accept, and otherwise it outputs reject. This is the message authentication code. This this is more common actually. A message authentication or message authentication code may use IV or nonce, and in this case, they are called IV based MAC or nonce based MAC, or, or or they can just don't use them and just take the message as input, and in this case, it is called a deterministic MAC. Uh, some instances could be found in these two references. So message authentication could be done via collision resistant hashing and a block cipher. So we just use the block cipher to encrypt the hash digest of the message. So in this case, uh, since the hash is collision resistant, it is difficult to find uh, to find two messages, find two different messages has the same input here. So it is hard to forge. This is an idea. As known by many, uh, we could have better efficiency for this hash than max scheme. We could use a combined natural object instead of the clear resistant hashing. We could use the universal hashing actually. So the universal hashing might be defined by a sequence of uh, field multiplications and uh, something like this so we use a hash we use a secret uh, universal hashing key hk and it uh, multiplies the first block of the messages and uh, it uh, multiplies the second block of the messages and like this and they, they just they are exalted as the hash digest in this case the hash key should be kept should be kept a secret so the key of the message uh, so the key of the message authentication Code the message authentication code it becomes the combination of the universal hashing key and the block cipher key. So both of them should be kept the secret. But this one could be more. If, but this hashing could be more efficient than uh, collision resistant hashing. Uh, it could also be defined based on the four round AES as known by many. So it's potentially more efficient. Uh, one step further, if the keyed function is a keyed is a keyed function or a PRF, we can use we can use a nonce for better security. Like this, this is the popular Wegman Carter Mac, and uh, some of the variants, some of the block cipher based variants could be found in this in, in these references. Uh, another approach to use ha use a hash for message authentication is the HMAC scheme. Uh, this approach looks like hashing the keyed message twice. Looks like something like this. Also, we can use a block cipher. Uh, this is a cipher block chain mode, CBC mode. So in this mode, the final piece of data depends on every block of the message. So it could you could be used to authenticate the message. And also this is another approach, uh, this is PMAC, uh, another approach to use a block cipher or use a tweakable block cipher. It has its own advantage compared with CPC. 
So here we just uh, list uh, these examples. Uh, of course, there are a lot, uh, a lot of others. So once we uh, implement the max the message authentication schemes and deploy, we are facing the side channel attack the issue. Uh, we will mainly focus on the differential power analysis issue. Uh, differential power analysis, uh, briefly speaking, once the key and secret is used to process different inputs or plain texts or messages, the differential power analysis would uh, allow the attacker to measure their power consumption and uh, compare and then extract the key and the secret. So with this in mind, we can see that the CPC Mac has an exact fit with this setting because the key of the block cipher is used to process different input blocks M0 uh, XOR the IV, M1 XOR the, the previous output, M2 XOR the previous output, and something like this. So the key is used to process different inputs, so it's an exact fit. We could recover the key. Uh, this is not something just the see, just the theoretical because such an uh, attack was used to break uh, the IoT scheme of the Philip uh, smart lamp. See this as an P paper. So what about the others? Uh, the others, uh, this one P mark is the same as CBC because uh, the same key is used to process different um, inputs. So if it is deployed without any side channel protection, it will be broken. So about the others, uh, about the universal hashing based max, actually they are the same. Uh, with the previous uh, multiplication based hashing in mind, we let's simplify the si simplify the situation. We imagine we only uh, use them to authenticate a single block of message. So the hashing turns into such a definition. Just uh, use the hash key to multiply the message. So then if we use the Mac to process different messages, we are able to collect a lot of, uh, leakage, a lot of leakages about the same secret Multiply, multiplied with different messages. So once again, we can use the differential power analysis to recover the hashing key. And once the key is recovered, the security of this uh, universal hashing based field multiplication based uh, multiplication uh, universal hashing max collapse. And about H Mac, uh, about H Mac. Uh, once again, the same key is used to process different messages, different inputs. So if, multi, uh, if multiple messages are processed by the, by, the, by the implementation, then we are able to uh, extract the key again. To defend against the side channel attacks, the differential power analysis and, something, and, and, and similar attacks, uh, we may use implementation implementation level protections such as masking, shuffling, and something like this. But these protections uh, induce severe overheads. So, for example, uh, according to the data given in this reference, uh, uh, the the cost of a single the cost of a single key the operation will increase from n cycles to ten n or even one hundred n cycles. It uh, has a severe blown up. So if we uh, if we follow this approach, the CPC will be we we, we will have to for, to do, to use the CPC. We will have to protect every block cipher call and every XOR. So it turns into a into a dark world. Every uh, every block cipher call and every XOR have to be protected. The PMAC will be uh, as dark as this one because we also have to protect every mess, uh, every block cipher call. So about universal hashing, about the universal hashing based Mac, uh, again we have to protect every field multiplication. So it is actually the same as uh, as before. The number of protected uh, calls is also uh, linear with the length of the message. Uh, it's basically the same as the block cipher based max. 
So to have something better, let's go back to the plan hash the Mac uh, using the collision resistant hashing. The collision resistant hashing might be less efficient, but it is secretless. It has no secret. So we do not need to protect anything about this hash, this hash execution. We only need to protect this block cipher. So only one of the core in this uh, computation flow needs to be protected to defend against the side channel attacks. So it is would be much more. Actually, if we have to use side channel protection to defend against the side channel attacks, it could be much more efficient than the previous uh, block cipher based designs and the universal based uh, universal hashing based designs. Uh, so it is unsurprisingly it was adopted in some previous papers uh, about leakage resilient max or leakage resilient authenticated encryptions let's see another issue of this uh, naive design about this naive design uh, if it is a mac during the verification we will face a verification leakage issue so uh, if the verification is defined by first compute the correct tag of the specified message M and check if it, ma if it matches the user specified target tag, then uh, we could use a lot of different verification queries on the same message and the different user specified uh, user specified incorrect tags and uh, try to observe the power traces of these comparison operations and actually this could, uh, could enable extract the right tag correspond to the message we specify so we are able to extract the, the right tag of this message and uh, make a forgery so to define against this kind of verification leakage uh, a previous reference of our group uh, proposed to use the inverse of the block cipher. We, during a verification of the user specified message and the tag, instead of computing the right tag of the message and compare with the user specified incorrect tag, we compute from both sides, both sides to the middle, from the message M to the middle and uh, to, to the hash digest and from the user specified tag to the inverse of the digest and compare at this side. If we do uh, the verification as such, then even if everything is leaked, even if everything is leaked, we only have a useless pseudo random value ek-1t. Uh, minus one T. This is useless for the forgery actually, and it, it can be formally proved. So the verification leakage turns useless here. So after we see uh, what are the message authentication scheme and what are leakage resilient message, message authentication, let's now see something about the birthday security issue. So about this design, uh, if we use inverse for the, so far so good, it is, it is, so far so good, it is resilient to leakages and uh, it is efficient for side channel security, but it has a low data, but due to the birthday issue, it has a low data attack. The attack has three steps. First, we find a collision on the hashing. Because the hash is keyless, we could uh, do this uh, during offline computation. Find a collision HM1 equals HM2. Uh, this requires 2 to n divided by 2 computations. If n equals 128, like the AES, then the computation is just 2 to 64. Then we ask the tagging oracle for the right tag of the message. So by this, the tag T is also the right tag of M2. So we have a forgery M2T. Uh, overall, the complexity, uh, the computation of this attack is 2 to n divided by 2. 
uh, and, and when when n equals one hundred and twenty eight, uh, the same as AES, the computation is two to sixty four. Uh, this might be moderate, but the data complexity is one. It's a low data attack, so overall this attack seems a severe real world threat. Security could be salvaged by a trickable block cipher. Uh, we use a two n use a hash with two n bit digest, and one half of a digest is used as the tweak. Then we could also use the inverse of a trickable block cipher to avoid the verification leakage. Uh, so, for this uh, scheme, the computation uh, needed to find a collision is turns into one hundred uh, two two n. And when n equals 128, it is 2 to 128, so this is infeasible. We could also salvage this hash the max scheme using a permutation with large input, like what is done in the i7 Mac scheme. But what if the crypto library only has reliable block cipher implementations? We have to instantiate such a scheme, such a hash the max scheme, use use a block cipher. So these uh, methods could not be used, and we seek for a solution to this question. So about this question, we offer block cipher based solutions. Uh, we propose block cipher based hash the max designs that has beyond the possibility probable bounds uh, in the presence of leakage. So the left one, uh, both of them use a use a hash function with two n bit digest. The left one, uh, in the left one, uh, a half of the digest is used as the input to the block cipher, and the two block cipher calls uh, are using two different block cipher keys. And the other half of the digest is used to exalt between the two block cipher calls. And the verification is also is also made in a meet in the middle check in the middle uh, manner. For the verification, we will compute the, the hash digest and compute uh, inversely and check if the intermediate value, values match here to, for the verification. And the right one, the right one uses a single block cipher key. It uses a key block cipher to derive, uh, an, uh, to derive a new key as the second block cipher call, and uh, so the second block cipher is uh, almost always rekeyed uh, for new message for new messages, and also the verification is made in a meet in the middle manner. We will uh, compute the hash digest in the forward direction and uh, compute the inverse of the block cipher and check if the intermediate the values match here. So about these two designs, uh, one could figure out uh, for the left one. For the left one, the two block cipher calls actually form uh, the the so-called LRW1 trickable block cipher proposed in the original LRW2 uh, LRW trickable block cipher paper. So this one we call it LRW based hash the Mac. For the right one, the right one actually the the actually the two block cipher calls in this in this right uh, red box is also a trickable block cipher proposed by in this paper. But due to the rekeying, due to the due to the use of the rekeying block cipher, we call it the rekeying based hash the Mac RHM. However, while the two schemes could be seen as the hash then trickable block cipher instantiated by two different trickable block cipher modes, module proof is not possible because uh, for the trickable block ciphers in the red in the red boxes, they could only be proved secure up to the birthday bound. But here we are trying to achieve beyond the birthday bound. And also for the left one, we are trying to prove beyond the birthday bound the security when the intermediate values, uh, when the intermediate values between the two block cipher calls are leaked to the adversary. 
So we could not use a, we could not try to employ a modular proof. This is not possible. So we prove them uh, via dedicated analysis. And uh, eventually our result as, uh, as such uh, for the LRW, for the LRW HMAX scheme, we proved the 2, 2, 2 n divided by 3 security when the block cipher is modeled as a strong pseudo-random permutation and the hash function h is modeled as a random oracle. For n equals 128, the concrete security is 2 to 78.3. This, uh, this should be much stronger than the 2 to 64 and might be sufficient for, for constraint settings, actually. And uh, for the routine based hash then Mac, we proved the asymptotically optimal security 2 to n divided by n security when the but only when the block cipher E is modeled as an ideal cipher. And again, uh, the hash function modeled as a random oracle. The concrete security is 2 to 121 for n equals 128. So these are their security. To confirm their efficiency, confirm their performance advantage, we seek for instantiations and comparisons. So we instantiated the block cipher using AGS-128 and for the hash function, we use the SHA-3 variant using the kchak f 400 permutation to enable a fair comparison with the ICF-MAC scheme. So for comparison, we compare with the with two uh, representative schemes. The first one is AES-CBC. So in the CBC, uh, the number of masked block cipher calls, masked key the executions, is linear in the length of the message. So this is a representative of the classical designs. And the second target is the ISAM mac uh, which is also a hash the mac with efficient side-channel security. It is, consumes one keyless hash plus plus one rate one duplex. It uses a rate one duplex for the masked block cipher. And the performance is demonstrated in these pictures. In all of the pictures, this line is the performance, the number of cycles consumed by the ISAP Mac. Because uh, the ISAP Mac does not need masking. So the performance uh, is irrelevant to the number of shares. But for our schemes, uh, of course, uh, the more the the more the shares, the less efficient it is. So that about the conclusion, uh, our proposals outperform the protected ASCBC as long as the messages are not too short. Uh, for example, uh, more than fifty bytes. This is uh, within our expectation. And also, our proposals uh, outperform ISAP MAC K when the level of side channel protection is not too strong. Uh, for example, it's less than the 10th order masking. And finally, uh, our proposals, uh, the performance is comparable to the more aggressive variant ISAP MAC K A. So for a more detailed comparison, uh, our schemes are extremely easy to deploy from existing crypto libs with masked ciphers. So for example, the HACL library proposed that CCS17, and uh, the scheme inherent, uh, in some sense, the security of the well-understood primitives, uh, the security of the masked block ciphers, and uh, something like this. And the, uh, the advantage of ISAP Max uh, lies in that it is a dedicated design for potentially better efficiency, and also the design uh, and also the design embeds default implementation as resists DPA. And uh, if you in, and if you implement ISAP Max correctly, uh, the implementation uh, will resist the DPA. Uh, by design.
Finally, for potential applications uh, with, with REST, uh, it could be used as side channel CQ Mac or AE. Uh, for example, it could be used, our proposals could be used to replace AES-CBC in the Philips Smart Lamps to close the side channel weakness. This will of course make the system more secure. And actually, uh, the design might find more applications beyond the side channel security. So for example, for efficient evaluation in multi-party computation engines, uh, this reference has identified the has identified the CTR then HT then hash the Mac scheme as the most efficient AE scheme in such engines. And uh, our proposal could be used to replace this plan hash the Mac scheme in their uh, in, in this AE scheme to achieve better security bonds. So that's all. Thank you.